Nitin Eli Roar with Extreme Panda here, and today I'm going to talk about doing tile play the right way. Um, so the first thing you have to know is that this is not a typical tile matching game um, where you make dozens and dozens of tile matches. It's a lot more complex uh, because you have heroes that have hero specials on your side and on their side. Um, and at this point, the game's been around for a few years, so the heroes are really, really good. Um, and they only give you a few turns to make wise decisions before either you're going to kill them off or they're going to kill you off. So you only have a few moves to, that will really make the difference. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the right way to play the board. I'm going to mention how people tend to do it wrong. And I'm going to give you some examples. So the first thing that you need to do is slow down. And I mean like painfully slow. Uh, and you're not slowing down uh, to for the sake of slowing down, it's, it's, it all is because of what you're looking at on the board. Um, so what I see way too often is people go in and play really fast. They're just looking for matches and they're making one match after another really quickly. Uh, and most of the time those are suboptimal decisions. Um, so when you're slowing down, you're looking at and taking in all of the information on the board. You're looking for hidden diamonds. Um, you're looking to uh, know how charged all the heroes are including yours and theirs so that if there's an easy match you can make that will charge up some of your hero specials you get to potentially kill them quicker um, so that you know how charged your opponent is so that you don't accidentally set off their hero specials real quick you're looking for cascades how to clump similar colors and on and on basically everything else that I talk about in this video you need to look for all those things between every single match now you need to really, really slow down if you haven't been doing that to do that, but you're going to get quicker at it as you get better at just kind of naturally seeing it. Um, so number uh, tip number two is going to be to make wise opening board matches. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to use a team that's not like super ideal here. Like I could put together a better team than this. This is a pretty good team, um, but I could, I could put to get together a better team. I want to simulate war a little bit though. Uh, so I'm not going to take like three purples or four purples against this Gwyn tank because I want to simulate what it's like to fight against Guinevere uh, when you don't necessarily have the heroes you want to have. Although Sashat is the big time winner here because she's not going to be negatively affected by Guinevere and Mitsuko. So when we um, click uh, attack here, we're going to take a look at the opening board. And I would say that your first three moves of the game are the most important, and it really comes down to two things. One, make obvious matches of your colors only if it's enough to charge your heroes fully. Otherwise, if you don't have enough of your colors, then clear away the crap. Um, especially against the Guinevere, you might set her off one time before you start making your own matches, and that's okay. Um, what people tend to do wrong is they go into the opening board and like, for example, I'm taking green and purple. Uh, what they would do is just make all the green and purple matches right off the bat and then they're screwed because Gwyn's going to go off and erase that and then there's no green and purple left and then they think that uh, the board screwed them. Um, and that's just not true. Like you got to you gotta make wise opening matches. So let's go in here and do that. Let's take a look at the opening board. All right, see, I got some purples. I got hardly any greens. Um, I, I could uh, make a purple match right off the bat, but I really need to take my time and slow down and see if that's the wisest thing. Because once I make that match, I might not have many purples left uh, and Gwyn will just undo that. Um, so in fact, I can already see that making a purple match right off the bat is not the best thing to do. Probably that blue one at the top is the best because that's going to uh, allow me to line up four purple tiles uh, to get a dragon bomb out of that. Um, plus, when I make that blue match, it's near the top, so it's going to cause some new tiles to come into the bottom and possibly make it so I get pretty close to being able to um, make a purple special. So let's see what that blue match does. All right. Um, I'm not super comfy making any purple matches at this point. Uh, because I just don't think I have enough purple tiles, uh, but I do have a yellow diamond at the bottom So see I'm scanning the whole board the obvious play is to make that purple match at the top It's probably not the right play the right play is to make the yellow diamond at the bottom All 
Okay. The next tip that I have for you is use odds in your favor. Um, what people tend to do wrong is they rely on luck. Um, just I've already mentioned making matches of their own colors indiscriminately, not really thinking about how that's actually playing on the board. They just come in and make matches of their own colors and then think, well, where would all my tiles go? Um, here's one of the odds that I'm considering at this very moment. When I hit the yellow diamond, it's going to get rid of one, two, three, four, five, six yellow tiles. Every color has a one-fifth chance of appearing after I do that, so I should get one or two more purple tiles when I hit the yellow diamond. Not only that, but it's going to make a purple dragon bomb, so playing the odds here is hitting the yellow diamond to create more purple tiles. Let's do that and see what happens. See that? That's exactly what I'm talking about with playing the odds. Okay, and now I have, uh, I have some heroes charged. Um, the thing about diamonds is, like, I got lucky there. I didn't have to get lucky, but I played the odds. So really, that's taking the luck out of it. You know, there's no move you can do in this that really, like, guarantees your next board or tiles that come on are going to be exactly what you need. Uh, but you can make moves that make it more likely the tiles you need end up in the places that you want them, like I just did. Uh, so that's how we now have three charged heroes um, and we have a clump of purple tiles. Also, um, this comes down to the next tip, which is know when to create cascades. Did you notice that I already could have created a couple of cascades, but what I was doing was setting up the board in a way that um, I wanted to clump some tiles. Um, I didn't create the cascade until I needed to, until I wanted to set the yellow diamond off. Um, to take out Guinevere. Uh, so again, the thing that people do wrong is simply just making obvious matches. Um, if you, most of the time, you want to create cascades to keep the board flowing, but there's sometimes you don't want to, to avoid setting off uh, opposing heroes. So let's just go ahead and, and use uh, these specials right now. Um, when you're using specials, this has nothing to do with tile play, but just who's the most threatening on the board. I think probably Kunshin. Um, so I'm just going to try and kill Kunshin. There's a couple of, of more tips that apply right here. In this particular spot, I can use this Liana to kill Kunshin. That's obvious. But should I do that? Probably not. Finish off, uh, finish a hero off with tiles if they're almost dead, like Kunshin's almost dead there. So I would waste Liana's Leon, special on him if I took him out. Instead, I think that it's better to fire this Liana at Misandra since she's already got the green uh, defense debuff here. So I'm going to hit her. And I'm going to try and kill Kunshin with tiles. All right. See, I've got a purple match that I can send right into him, which will get him pretty low, maybe not fully kill him. Um, but that purple match is going to make it more likely that greens show up underneath. And I definitely have a green diamond, so I know that that can set it off. An obvious play might be to hit the green diamond right now. I don't think that's right, because I don't think that would fully charge up my heroes, so I'm making the purple match. Alright, now I have enough green tiles to set this green diamond off to where it's going to charge up my Eve Liana Liana. And it should kill... Uh, Kunshin, and that green tile on the far left should also kill Misandra. So let's go ahead and this is one of those areas when you need to know when to create a cascade. This is a good time to create a cascade. All right. Um, the next tip that I have for you is to ghost tiles when you have a gap. So you can see we have a gap now. Um, that's really good for being able to recharge heroes pretty quickly. So I'm just gonna send some tiles up the gap now. One thing I see a lot of people do wrong is there's a single hero over on the left. Now I know that that's because she revived and she's only got one life left, but when there's one hero left, I see people all the time hitting that hero with, with tiles and like, why would you do that? because you're just going to charge that hero up and then 
you know, they could possibly get back in it. And I, I've totally seen like where there's a cage brado left and he just goes and kills like three heroes all by himself. Um, so don't do that. I can fire a special off here. Hopefully she doesn't revive again, but um, that's it. Okay. Um, one of the uh, tips that I have for you that you didn't really get to see in there um, is to uh, throw garbage at a fully charged hero. So what I mean by that is, um, you know, if you're really working the board and um, one of the opposing heroes charges up fully, then look for garbage underneath that hero to make a match and send it in. I mean, you can make a good match too. Like, that's totally fine. But um, make a match underneath that hero because it doesn't matter. They're already charged. You're not going to charge them any more than they're already charged. What people tend to do wrong is that when that opposing hero is charged, they're still making matches in other parts of the board and charging up other heroes. So now you've got like possibly two or three heroes charged when you really only needed to have one charged and it's going to hit you. Um, and that just makes it more dangerous. The more their heroes charge, the more likely it is that your heroes are going to die. And then the more your heroes are dead, the less likely you're going to win. So um, if they have a fully charged hero on their side of the board, um, take a look at what's underneath and can you... It's kind of like ghosting, but not as powerful. But it's it's a way to get rid of some bad tiles without it really harming you. Because you're going to get hit with their special no matter what anyway, right? So, um, So that's something that you want to look out for. All right, um, another, uh, another thing just to kind of end the video um, is, uh, you know, when I talk about using odds in your favor, um, I had shown you that with the yellow diamond, um, that getting rid of all those yellow tiles was going to make it more likely that I would get purple tiles, and it was a good thing that I didn't make all those purple matches at first, because when I set the yellow diamond off, it, it sure did clump not only the purples, but the greens. Um, and that wasn't totally luck. Like, I played the odds that way. Here's a couple other ways you can play the odds. Um, you can do what's called making a sandwich, <laughs> which is um, if you have two colored tiles um, with a gap in between them in the board, uh, but, but a way to make a vertical match up between them, um, you can potentially... Uh, make a sandwich, which is, you know, you send that vertical tile upwards, and then you have one-fifth chance of getting a tile to land exactly in the middle of those to make a, a match for a cascade. Um, you have a better than one-fifth chance. You actually have a three-fifth chance, I believe. I'm not a math major or anything like that, but um, you have a much higher chance of getting uh, a colored tile that you need in the vicinity of that as well so that you can just easily make a colored match. Um, I wish I could show you an example of what I'm talking about. Um, I hope that that made sense. We didn't really get to see it in the example that I gave here, but some other ways that you wanna um, use odds in your favor are setting up diamonds. Like, there's obvious diamonds. I'm not talking about making diamond matches. Of course you wanna look out for those. I'm talking about setting up diamonds. Look around the board and see where our colors starting to clump and can you make the matches in a way where you can set up the ability to make a diamond. Um, so those are just some examples of ways to use odds in your favor. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful to you at least getting started um, in uh, good tile play. If you have any questions, certainly leave them in the comments. Me or other people will help to answer them. Thanks for watching.